Hey, how you doing? This is Marky Worthington. You're listening to the Marky Worthington Comedy Podcast. This is episode 17 with my buddy Jack Taylor. Uh, this is also isolation episode 4. We uh, get through some um, what would you rather questions and then devote the uh, rest of the show to our uh, special apocalypse questions, mostly zombie apocalypse themed so I hope you guys enjoy this one. Uh, as I mentioned at the start of the show, I like to go more into um, having some of my buddies on the show at the moment just to uh, give everyone a bit more of an insight into um, different opinions aside from just comedians, but also fairly fun- funny conversations. So I hope it's all good content. Um, I know that we started the online reviews section last episode. Uh, this one here is just purely based on apocalypse questions towards the end. So if you have any online reviews you want to submit to the show make sure you head over to um, my social media accounts and um, submit those questions i need a link to the source um, material that you um that you want me to uh, have a look at on the show and you can send that through either the social media channels or send them via gmail you can find me at marky worthington comedy at gmail.com so thanks for listening to the show so far hopefully it's um giving you guys some content to listen to during the uh, current isolation climate. And, uh, yeah, hope you guys are having as much fun listening as I am recording these. Got my buddy here, Jack Taylor. Hi, Jack. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Good, good, man. It's good to have you on the show. Um, Just for the listeners... Good to be on the show. Just for the listeners... Uh, Jack's not a stand-up comedian, but he did support me the first time I ever came along to uh, comedy, and uh, that that's pretty much what get me keep get, keep to keep coming along because I know when I first started, um, if I didn't have people there to tell me like, no, no, you did fine, you did fine, I wouldn't have come back. So he, um, Bro, I not on the only supported you during your first thing. I, I like to think I set you upon this path. <laughs> All throughout high school, I kept saying. You should be a comedian. Yeah, yeah you were exactly. funny. <laughs> so, if anyone wants to blame one person, I mean, I've got him here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's it. We've been through some like we, we've like we grew up together, so like we we have similar stories in certain situations, uh, similar mindsets yep. and stuff. So. It's um, good to ha- good to have him on the show for this, and um, the reason I decided to bring him on is because I'm following this pattern of having a um, local comedian during the isolation episodes every second week, and then just a, a mate every um, other week, so that we um, can not just have chats about comedy, but also just chats in general, so that if anyone wants to listen in to a conversation flow between two two buddies, then it usually uh, usually is a good episode. Uh, the reason that um, this one's come about is because I'm going to call this one the Apocalypse Edition because uh, in a previous episode with Stewie Keys we spoke about who would um, be, you know, um, how we'd handle the Apocalypse and I thought I know who would be good to talk about this, my buddy Jack because I remember when we were growing up we'd be always just like talking about the best way to get out of like, you know, in zombie situations if we're watching movies or playing games together all that sort of stuff. So I was like, hey, we're going to have a hypothetical conversation. It may as well be with someone that I've already practiced with. Yeah, Many man. hours. <laughs> yeah, hours. Like, I mean, as far as things go, I think, like, Jack's definitely clocked up more hours than me when it comes to, like, to gaming and stuff. I think we've spent equal amount of times just with, like, hypothetical situations than we have, like, playing games. And it shows. Like, I'm such a terrible gamer. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll think of every possible situation when it comes to like an apocalypse, zombies, um, like anything like that. I'll just come up with every possible thing. But like speaking about games and stuff, man, have you played any like recent games that you, um, that you're getting into? Recently, I've been playing a game called Green Hell. Okay. And what it is, is it's a, it's a survivor, right? Set in the Amazon and it is super graphic. Like, the ways you get killed are brutal as heck. And you can get, like, parasites and worms and uh, very graphic. Yeah, right. You get a big gash on you and, like, you got to, like, bandage it up and stuff. And it's all in first person. It is pretty realistic. It's kind of fun. Yeah, awesome, man. Like, I feel like, so you're, back to, like, our gaming styles, you're more into, like, like big long story sort of games? Yeah. 
I, I feel like if I'm going to spend a hundred bucks on a game, I want it to take me half, you know, a couple months. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, uh, it's because I'm cheap. That's basically the reason. <laughs> <laughs> RPGs, value for money. <laughs> you know, basically, basically, like think about it. People are still playing Skyrim to this day. That's a great buy. People finish COD within a week, and they were the same price. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the the funny thing about this is though, like. I have such a short attention span. Instead of, like, investing in, like, a good, solid game that'll take me a while to finish, I'll just buy, like, an indie game that I'll finish in eight hours, and then I'll buy another one and just keep doing that. <laughs> See? And then by the end of the week, you spend, you know, however much money on games, and I'm here sitting on my game I've been playing for three months and I haven't spent any more money. <laughs> <laughs> Except for, no, dude, you got to remember the uh, indie games. Like, by the end of the week, I've spent, like, $4.50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're the cheap indie games, the real cheap ones. Yeah, there's, there's like, the ones where it's basically the same mechanics, but just with a different character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's a, you're a new person. Well, this just makes a completely different game. It's the same mechanics. Yeah, this is... Oh, it's another platformer for fifty cents. Yeah, yeah. not gonna argue with that. Perfect. I uh, I'm I'm looking at one, and then I'm like, oh, I'm a square in this one instead of a circle. Well, that's completely different. <laughs> I wonder how this one plays. I, I tell you what, though, I played for the first time ever, and it I I mm. bought it ages ago, but I um didn't play it. I, I bought it because it was like a, a sale on PSN or something. And I didn't play it for yonks. And then I was like, oh, I think I'll give this one a crack. And I, um, within like a week, I played for and finished all five um, seasons of uh, Life is Strange. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, I, I really liked it. looks really interesting. Yeah, I really liked it. I think it's kind of like the pinnacle of indie games, though. Like, it's probably the... Yeah, it's one of those story-driven ones. Yeah, but like a lot of really good work goes into it. Like... I'm not. Yeah. I'm not a. Um, I'm not a game designer or developer or anything like that. But I have yeah. done a few. Um, I've played quite a few um, story-based games, and just yeah. looking at that one and then seeing the work that goes into like be um, behind the scenes for each decision that you make, um, it's cool yeah. that they actually put so much fucking work into the storyline. Yeah. You'd, you'd probably like the Telltale series. And there's a couple of different ones. There's like Batman, uh, Walking yeah, Dead. That's right, yeah. Um, I reckon The Wolf Among Us would be perfect for you. I'm pretty sure that I have that in my like card at the moment. Man, don't you just fuck it. Like, I bet you there's indie gamers out there, that like developers, that um mm. can see how many people have their game in their cart and they're just like, just fucking buy it, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You've been watching it for four months. It's never been cheaper. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, my Steam wish list has like 20 things on it. So I'm just waiting, waiting for the perfect opportunity. Yep. Yeah, I get it. I get that. It's yeah. like um, the Steam Witch wish list is like the like gamers version of the fucking like the matches that like someone that's popular has on Tinder. They're just like waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is how we live the life of a Tinder star, but it's just Steam instead. Mm. And just like Tinder, for those people, it's like a, a quest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the only difference is we don't need to ban gaming because of isolation. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we can still play ours. <laughs> <laughs> as far as time-consuming stuff to do instead of going out, pretty much just TV series and stuff. I nearly finished Lock and Key on Netflix, which is pretty interesting. Oh, I heard about that one. Yep. Yep. And um, the new series um, 
on Stan at the moment. It's um, Penny Dreadful, City of Angels. Oh, I've, I've heard of that one as well. Yeah, it, it's really good. It's um, re- they're, they're still releasing episodes weekly, so they've done a few episodes so far and they release them on Sundays, I think. Mm. And yeah, so far, really, really good. Hey, I've got a question for you. Yep. Have you ever wondered what a DMT trip would be like? Yeah, well, I... I too have listened to Joe Rogan's podcast. But yeah, <laughs> no. Oh, speaking um, of which, that... thanks for tuning into the Marky Worthington comedy podcast, Joe. I know you're a <laughs> long time listener. <laughs> uh, he probably isn't, but there's a there's a new show on Netflix. Yep. Called um, Midnight Gospel. Yep. Okay. And it's only eight episodes, and it is just mind blowing. Right. It is incredible, but. Uh, I felt like my brain grew two sizes watching it. Wow. Like, I, I feel more enlightened. But your head didn't grow, <laughs> which means there was room to move in there. <laughs> <laughs> Who says my head hasn't grown? <laughs> Walking around like a friggin' alien at this point. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you're, like a, head you're like that um, Mr. Mind or whatever his name was. Mr. Mind. Uh, mind something some kids show with this dude this massive brain it's like mind something magnificent mind something like that ah i can't remember fuck it (laughs) if 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 anyone out there listening watches fucking kid shows instead of adult shit just fucking drop the name in the comments like i'm sure you'll correct me (laughs) (laughs) now watch as i reply to my own comment saying what the name was um (laughs) But yeah, anyway. Oh, that's right. I'm the one that mentioned it. Turns out I'm the asshole here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, no. So, um I haven't um I haven't seen that series, but uh I have described as a local comedian Chris Malton. I know you listen to the show, Chris. Um and I've always described his set as as close as you can come to taking acid without actually doing it. Yeah, yeah, similar thing. So it's like he'll have like um, he'll have different characters that he does on stage, um, and mm. different like voices for each character. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's it's a pretty pretty interesting way of writing because he can, if he's got a bit that might work better with a certain character, he can do that bit as that character. Whereas I find when I do material, I need to kind of like, it's like building a playlist. I've got to kind of have jokes that flow from one to the other. Whereas I'm sure he'll have the same thing, but just with multiple characters. It's like that movie yeah. Split. Like you just don't know who he's going to rock up as. It was a good movie. <laughs> yeah, dude, I have to, I the still haven't even seen it, dude. The third one was a bit disappointing. Right. The Wait, third... you, you seriously haven't seen it? No, I haven't, dude. I haven't. Wait, the third what? Like the third movie or character? Because... <laughs> The third movie. Yeah, I know, I know, but like, imagine if you were just judging each character. Like, look, man, your third <laughs> character, not a big fan. Like, I just think. Well, that... the dude's got like twenty characters, and you see like five in the movie. Right. right. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, the third one was disappointing. Very disappointing. I won't say too much because spoilers. Yep. But uh, Mister Glass or Glass, not as good as I was hoping. Okay. Still good though. Yeah, Still worth, worth a watch. watch. Worth a watch. There we go. Worth so we, a watch. We've covered off uh, like movies and um, games so far, but uh, pretty much why I figured that we'd be able to have a uh, chat about apocalypse stuff and the apocalypse being the apocalypse episode. Um, we've got some like what would you rather questions um, oh, okay. and scenarios, Excellent. which they're, they mm-hmm. they we get into the apocalypse stuff later. But I'm going to start it up. I'm going to going to get you for a few jabs here with a few just normal non-apocalypse related questions. <laughs> you know, right, couple, right, just a right. couple of distance judges here. You know, just the oh, dude. Speaking of fucking boxing, did you see that Eddie Hall and Thor thing got a fuck announced? Wait, wait. Eddie Hall was gonna fight Thor. Yeah, the mountain from fucking Game of Thrones in like August next dude, year. He, he just set the like deadlift record. Did you see how much it was? Yeah, five hundred and one kilos. That is a crap ton of weight. Yeah, it's because Eddie Hall did fucking five hundred, so he beat him by a kilo. <laughs> yeah, true. Eddie Hall is a massive dude, but he has um. He's a fucking beast. Oh, what is it? I remember. Yeah, he has a disease that uh, prevents your body from stopping muscle growth. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I was watching an interview with Eddie Hall, and his children have got it too. Um, 
And what it is, is your brain has certain limiters to stop you from basically tearing your body to pieces, right? Yeah, yeah, right. He he doesn't have those limiters. He can keep packing on more and more muscle Holy shit. at the risk of his bones splintering under his own muscle mass. Holy fuck. Because um, that's how you hear stories about, like, like a like a sixty eight kilo mother of two lifts a car off their kid. Yeah, I actually saw a video um, of a dude lifting a helicopter. Yeah, right. What? What do you it, it like? Crashed. Was it on his shoe or something? <laughs> no, no. Um, it, it crashed and the dude was uh, pinned. Yeah, right. And he and he, he lifted it. not not far, like only you know. Like half a foot. Yeah, well, he wasn't doing it impressive. to impress people. Like he wasn't just like, <laughs> oh, like, it's almost not just like, oh, I bet you couldn't lift it further. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't lift it completely off the ground. Yeah. He only needed to lift one just side, lean but... it to get it off. Yeah, still, you know, it was pretty impressive, dude. That that's insane, and I feel like that's the kind of mental motivation that people unlock when they go into like the strongman competitions. Yeah, yeah, they go into one of those. They go into that mindset of just you got to do this or you might die. So who cares about the consequences to your body in the long run? Yeah, like um, the video of Eddie Hall doing the five hundred kilo deadlift, and then his nose just starts bleeding and he passes out. Yeah, yeah, not surprised. Like there's reasons we, we our body stops us from doing things. Uh, it's for our health, basically. <laughs> Yeah. Did you see the guy's arm wrestling and like his arm just snaps? Yeah, dude. I haven't arm wrestled anyone since I've seen that video. Yeah, it was it was brutal as heck. Oh, uh, also recently because of the social distancing. Dude, I haven't realized that yeah, I haven't shooken shooken. I haven't shaken someone's hand in like since the start of March. I know, I know. Like my girlfriend and I, I, I live And I used to shake a lot of hands and hugs, John, I'm a big hugger. Yeah, dude, like I, I um I was listening to a podcast the other day and they had this Italian dude on there and he's just like they so they said said to him um oh, he's like he's not Italian he's um part Greek part Sicilian Paul Verzi from mm-hmm. uh, upstate New York anyway half Greek yeah. half Sicilian dude and he just goes I've been listening to his podcast for ages man um and I um and he, and he goes like dude fuck uh, fuck that I'm like not gonna live the rest of my life without shaking a hand <laughs> because yeah, that's the problem though it could. The rest of your life might be very short if you go around shaking hands. No, what what he means, so basically to like justify what he said, they said, do you think this will be like the new norm? Do you think like if everything returns to normal soon, will people take a while to adjust and maybe eventually stop having such like um, like interhuman connection, like physical uh, connection? Uh, ah, yeah. I don't know. Like, it could be a thing. What's your thoughts? Do you reckon this that this could change, like, how people act even in the future? Oh. No. <laughs> 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 the thing is, the thing is, oh, man. People, people are very resistant to change. Yeah. Like, we, we, we don't adapt easily. And I don't think this will be around long enough to for it to form habits. Habits yeah. take a while to form. Yeah. Uh, I reckon, you know, they're, they're talking about, in Australia particularly, like lifting the restrictions already. Mm, mm. In another two or three months, like, we maybe have no restrictions. Yeah, yeah. Like, so that, that that's, like, everyone will continue washing their hands with sanitizer. I think that will start... I mean, stick, but people, people are lazy. Yeah, dude. Like, if, if an important restriction now is going to cause them, you know, to be annoyed in the future, if it's like in their way at all, they're going to discard it. They're like, this makes no sense now. It's going to be gone. Yeah, true. It'd be um, like when you get and your license. people like hugs. <laughs> yeah, dude. People yeah. like shaking hands. <laughs> Human contact is important for humans. We're uh, social animals. True. So true. people are going to keep doing it no matter what. <laughs> Dude, I I love how this perfectly explains the whole reasoning behind, like, you just going, nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, all this was summed up with just one response, and you're now explaining how much 
mental work went into like that response. <laughs> <laughs> like, like if anyone was listening to this episode was just like fuck he thought about nah for a long time and then <laughs> now you can see exactly why because all this fucking work went on in the background as to why he just said nah like that's the best thing i love yeah, about yeah. it man like most people would have said of course i was gonna think about it <laughs> yeah, yeah like it's like it's fucking like it's like when you when you see like a computer take a while to open a program, and then you look in the background, you see how much fucking work it's doing to open that program. You're like, oh fucking <laughs> fair enough. So like, <laughs> it's like in this example, it's like, well, all I got was nah. It took him ages to say that. Well, we're getting into the behind the fucking processor here, and we're seeing what, <laughs> yeah. seeing what goes on. I hit on. you with the response, and then I hit you with the reasoning. Yeah, dude, it's perfect. You're better than a computer because like you open the program first and then did all the thinking like explaining <laughs> later <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's fucking awesome but yeah anyway um yeah you're right man i i think that um i think you're right anyway i reckon that a lot of people um a lot of people are already kind of starting to um resist change yeah. with yeah. all this and, and dude i tell you the grossest thought i had the other day man i, I was in a shop the other day and i realized that there was um, no, still no soap. Like, there was bars of soap, but, like, dude, what is this, 1990 fucking two? Like, I want liquid soap in my in, <laughs> to wash my hands with, to pick up a pool. Oh, really? Still sold out in... Yeah, still sold there. out in the shop I went to. Mm. Um, and I was thinking to myself, dude, like, I just... You know how, have you ever just thought of something and then, like, you can't unthink that? Like, it, you're kind of stuck with that now and, like unless someone dramatically changes your perception, you, you just continue to believe that thing. Yeah. I imagine to myself that the only reason that all the soap was sold out was because people that weren't washing their hands before are washing them now. <laughs> you see, that that's a scary thing, but it's also quite accurate. Like, you go to a public restroom and... Far too often, people just leave without washing their hands. Man, I'm going to start calling those or, people out Or they out wash now. their hands with just water, yeah. you know? Yeah. You, know you, you see them and they, they rinse their hands for like two seconds and they're like, done. Like, it's... Bitch, go back and wash your fucking hands. Yeah, dude. I'm, no, I'm literally going to start calling those motherfuckers out now, dude. Like, if I'm taking a piss, I'm going to be looking over my shoulder going like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wash your damn hands, you grog. Man, I just look forward to the time where I can go into a bar and have a drink and, like, not be at home. Like, I'm looking forward to that time. Like, I feel like... Do you reckon people are kind of, like, realising how much they took socialising for granted before? Oh, heck yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah. Um, I reckon this spike of positivity, um, once we're all released, will be a sudden spike of positivity that will last for... A about six or seven weeks, and then people <laughs> go back to being good old grumpy people. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, I think that work yeah, you're in right. life just gets people down. Well, it's like it's kind of like after um, like the different pandemics we've had in the past with like Spanish flu yeah. and stuff like that. After that, everyone just went like absolutely insane because they could actually do stuff again. Yep, yeah. and then yeah, that lasted for a little while, and then World War. What was it? One was one in nineteen twenty. Nah, it have been World War Two. Yeah, yeah. Nineteen twelve was I mean, World War Two was nineteen forties. So yeah. So there you go. I think. I look. There's another podcast listener, Jeffrey Charles. Man, he um he he's definitely going to know exactly what time that started. Man, dude's a history buff. Nice. Yeah, Jeff. Thanks for listening. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> let, let us know when the wars began and and ended. Yeah, exactly. He, he's like the brains trust, but like only when the episodes released. <laughs> so it's like kind of a, <laughs> a slow response. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah. So that's the um, yeah. It's, it's like the the thought of that how how it's all going to work. But let me tell you, dude. Like I'm definitely going to be calling people out for not washing their hands. Like. It, it, like, I've done it once before. I've been out somewhere, and this dude just, like, walks in, pays, walks out. And I was just like, yeah. oh, oh, he's about to walk out, right? And I'm just like, dude, wash your hands. And he was just like, it's all right, I washed my dick this morning. That's not how it works. And I was that's just like, dude, <laughs> I was like, dude, that's assuming you washed your hands before you touched it, you fucking grub. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the only way that's gonna work is if you washed your hands, then peed, then walked out. 
It's just like, well, if you're going to wash them once, you may as well do it at the fucking end. Yeah, um, do you remember... Uh, yeah. Yeah, mum's boyfriend for, like, a couple of weeks. Oh, good, yeah, we can... See, I don't normally mention names, but we can, like, trash talk that guy for sure. Yeah, he's a terrible person. In fact, I don't know his in fact if you... Yeah, exactly. If you if you know this guy and you're, like, feeding information back to him, just, like, know that you're not welcome here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the thing with James was, he never once washed his hands. Right. And he used to cook, and he used to get handsy in the cooking. Whoa. Handsy. You know what I'm saying? Handsy's just a filthy yeah. word in general, filthy description <laughs> anyway. You know? Like, yeah, you, you, know, you know, he, he made to make things that you like to mix with your hands. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Like, he's just like, yeah, you just, you just get a mental flashback of him like going to the bathroom, not washing his hands and coming out. And he's like, all right, who wants meatballs? And you like start puking in your mouth. Yeah, basically, basically. <laughs> oh, that guy. Oh, oh man. Oh. That, that's, dude, that's just, people that don't oh. wash their hands is just. I don't know why the hell people... Yeah, I, I think it, it comes down to basically how they were raised. Yeah. yeah. And, and, like, the difference between generations. I mean, as information becomes more prevalent, we better understand the importance of hygiene. And when we went to school, people told you, wash, wash your hands or at least blah, 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 do this, do that. Yeah, sing Yankee Doodle or whatever the fuck you got to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When they were growing up, they probably didn't have that crap, you know? Yeah. They only had Yankee Doodle, but they didn't know how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, they invented songs. They, for... they thought it was for actually yanking your doodle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, then he went to town riding on a pony? What a fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they like have guidelines. Like, all right, you need to jerk off your dick to this amount of time. If it go over or under, try again next time. Like, it's a health thing. <laughs> it's like how they um, how you count in seconds, and they say like one Mississippi. Two. <laughs> um, I just realised we've went on another tangent. Let's, let's go back to the question. <laughs> I like this. That's 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 good host and um, guest material there. Like you, you just brought yeah, me, yeah, brought yeah, me good back banter, online. Banter. Yeah, no. I love how I, the British say banter. banter. Sounds so much better than we say. Man, I. What I'm saying is, like, normally the host is meant to pull it back online. I'm, I'm liking this shit. <laughs> You're the one who's gone off on a, you know, off the rails. I'm like, no, 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 no. You, you, yeah, yeah. Got limited it's, time here. You peer pressured me into doing my own show. <laughs> uh, uh, for some reason, I feel like this has been the case throughout most of our lives. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like we're just still talking at school, and all of a sudden, I'm like, holy shit, I'm 27. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh, oh. Most of the way to 30. Man, the good thing is I've, the hell off. I've looked like 35 since I was 25, so I've got like 10 years <laughs> yeah, of borrowed time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I've aged like a pair of white sneakers. You mean terribly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so after the first few weeks, fucked. But then like they look the same for a good few years after that. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right, so we'll warm up with uh, a couple of questions. Let me let me hear your, um, hear your take on this. Okay. Now, Go for it. Would you prefer to be the only human in the world that can mm-hmm. run at 100 kilometers an hour? Oh, that's cool. Or be the only human in the world that can fly, but only at 10 kilometers an hour? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let's talk about energy consumption real quick. <laughs> yep. If I'm running 100 kilometers an hour, how long am I able to keep this up for? Okay, so I've heard this previously on another podcast, and I altered it a little bit for this podcast, and I thought of some of the, I call them loopholes for this question. So Loopholes and the limitations. Yeah, because so, I, I know we usually go deep on this shit, so I was like, if I'm going to ask this <laughs> to Jack, I've got to have some good fucking like, story yeah, you, behind you, you, you it. You've got to have, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the limits and abilities. Yeah, yeah, because you're, cause you're the sort of dude that like, because most people, if they don't want to answer a question, they'll be like, oh, it's all right, I'll just kill myself. But you're, but you're just, <laughs> <laughs> there's like, that's normally the go-to loophole, but you're just like, ah, well, what about this? And what about, so like, <laughs> 
<laughs> the, um, <laughs> yeah. The, well, um, the, 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 the point of a thought experiment is to think about it. So I like to take all the angles, you know? Right. So this one is no energy mm-hmm. consumption for either. So, like, there, you kind Ooh. of, you, you can just um, do it. It's like, let, imagine this. Imagine that when you do this, here's another loophole which I'll cover off in this answer. Mm-hmm. When you do this, there's like a force field around you that carries you at that speed. So instead of being you that's doing it, it's this energy around you that's doing it. It then covers off the okay. next loophole, which is can bugs hit you in the face at 100 kilometers? Can like a bird fly into you? when you're yeah. flying, all that sort of shit. There's like a force field around you that protects you from shit. It's also the energy that takes you at that um, speed. Okay, so like the speed force with the flash. There we go, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, this is... Ooh. And so you're saying when I'm running at 100 kilometers an hour, it costs you no energy or no extra energy compared to running normally? Um, same. It's it's the same as if you were just standing there. It's like you just get picked up and taken away. Oh, dude, that's sick. And I have a force field. Oh, yep. that, that's very useful. Yep. So you can you can like just control it with your mind as if you were walking, but only it's not um, it's not actually um your body that's exhausted by doing it. Okay. Okay. But this is for and... either one. So like if you choose the fly <coughs> option, um, it's. It's, it's the same flight, thing, basically. but the flight thing is only mm-hmm. limited to Earth's atmosphere. Oh, yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. All right, all right, all right. It'll take you a long time to travel out of space at 10 kilometers an hour anyway. Okay, and is this in modern day Earth? Right now. Right now. Right now, I'll get these powers. Yep. Ooh, here's what I do. I take the flight, and here's why. Think of the job opportunities you could get for a fly if you had the ability to fly. Yep. I mean, I could be an electrician. I could fix power lines. Yep. You know, I don't need to get all that safety equipment. I can flip and fly. <laughs> and I you got a force field. Rises. And I get a force field. I can work on high rises. Dude, I love how, and, like... And how powerful is the force field? Okay, so... Let's so... talk about this real quick. Okay, so it's, it's just like an energy force field, so similar to your own um, force of, like pushing so like if you okay, okay. if you just like so it, it's push basically someone your push force being pushed out in an even area around you around you yeah yeah so it's not going to be any stopping any bullets but it'll do pretty good against most things yeah like if, if you if you um had something like falling on your head that wasn't too heavy it would heavy. It, it, it would like stop it from from hitting you as it fell Yep, yep, I'd go to the flight. The, the amount of things I could accomplish with that flight. Yep. I, mean, I don't really need to get anywhere quickly. I mean, it'd be really useful. Yeah, yeah, I feel like 10 The opportunities of flights would just... <laughs> oh, I, you could work in the fourth dimension. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, basically, you, you'd have a literal leg up over everyone else in the business. <laughs> Dude, I, lo- I love how <laughs> you think of the job opportunities like... Oh, dude, I could work on power lines. I could clean windows. Like, these are the, the, the fucking... This is, like, how far you, the horizon goes. Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I, I get I, it. I wouldn't fly just... too high because my push force can't keep off a plane. Yeah. Uh, but, you know... Uh, imagine that, though, like, dude. Like, imagine just, like, that's your power you have and you choose to, like, clean windows on a high-rise office building. Dude, do you know how much money high rate, uh, like those window cleaners actually get paid? Yeah. Especially for the ones who need to ab sale. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's it's like yeah, good danger money, days, right? Bro. Yeah, but I'm picturing right everyone's on the workforce, they're um they're like using their safety harnesses and stuff. And like, hey, how, yep. how come Jack doesn't need a harness? Like, oh he's got a magical power and he chose this as how he wants to use it. <laughs> <laughs> just well, fucking dude, like... I gotta make money somehow. <laughs> it's like I'm not a superhero. Think, think of the just... contract opportunities. Oh like, man, jobs that would take yes. other people all day 
would take you like 10 minutes. Dude, you could be the official guy that changes the light bulb on all the fucking things that the planes like know not to hit. <laughs> like on all the... All, what? You know on all like the massive tall buildings that have like a red flashing light at the top? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, your job is to officially change all those whenever they go out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if I was working off a commission base and I set up like, you know, things that take people a day and I set up like five of those a day, and that only takes me like a couple of hours and I got the rest of the day myself, I'd be doing so well. So no, well. Yeah, I, I dig it, man. Just imagine that, though. Just, <laughs> like, um, they they think... They, so you don't tell them you got the superpower first. You you just, like, roll up and they're like, oh, where's all your safety stuff? And you're like, oh, I don't need it. And they're like, look, man, we're, like, we're just going to have to get you to sign this waiver to say that you're not going to sue us if you fall and all that stuff, and then you just <laughs> yeah. float up into the air. <laughs> so cool no solid solid effort no, i'd probably i'd take the flight too but like dude you you're thinking about job opportunities and shit i'm just like man i'd be able to get to work without having to pay for parking like 10 k's an hour <laughs> and it's in a straight line too like man i could just yeah, yeah. straight up straight to work and then go down but the thing is with my idea i still have my same <laughs> shitty job i'm just a guy that can fucking fly <laughs> <laughs> like Dude, you, you, you can't take up advantage of it in all aspects of life. Like, yeah, but you're like you're you exactly you're like incorporating it into. All right, now I'll get this job and I can do this stuff, and I'm just like, oh, it'll just make my life a little easier. <laughs> 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 just still doing the same mundane shit. <laughs> Like, you know how, like, you, you if you're walking somewhere and, like, someone goes to turn right, you go to turn left, so you're both facing each other, and then, like, it, it's kind of, like, awkward? Yep. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll just hover over them, and they'll be like, I'll be like, don't worry, <laughs> don't no need to be awkward now, I have a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, I, I've got I've got another one. I've got another one. This will be the one that will get us later on into our uh, apocalypse question. Okay, okay. Okay, this one, this one is going to make you do that thing that you do when you watch Jackass, when you like bite your f index finger, when you're like making a fist. You know that thing. Oh, so this, this is going to make me a, uh, going to make me um, cringe. I have no idea. Yeah, this one's going to make <laughs> you cringe. Yeah. Okay, so you got two options. Mm -hmm. You can either pry off your thumbnail with a fork, Ooh. or oh. put a toothpick under your toenail and kick <laughs> your. Oh, and kick a wall. You know I hate that. Ever since I saw the video of that guy doing that, you know I hate that. That kept me up for weeks. Why, right, dude? What's your what's your what's your choice? Uh, oh, see, the, oh, that's a tough one. The toenail would be quicker. Yep. But I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the other not, one would be I'm not assuming slower. that they're both good options. Like, you're not going to be sitting there like, oh, fuck a toothpick any day, man. I love that shit. <laughs> Some dude did it for free. Okay, so, like... <laughs> but he probably had problems. Yep. Do, do I get to, to, like, down a bottle of whiskey first? You can do whatever you do before. Like, you can... You can do whatever. The only thing I'm not going to let you do is, like, put, like, an sedative or anything in your, like, in the thing you're going to, like, a local anesthetic or some shit. Damn it. Okay, um... Oh, that's tough. Fork is I'd a probably... long, slow, painful way to do it. Yeah, I'd probably... Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Tying off your thumbnail, it's only, like, what, like, three, two centimetres? Yeah. A toothpick is could is like, you know, five or six centimeters up your toe. Yeah, but dude, I'm not saying you have to bury the whole fucking toothpick. Like I'm just saying. Well, I've got to kick it with full force. It's <laughs> gonna get buried. Jack's just like fuck it. If I'm gonna do it, I'm not gonna half ass the shit. Well, I, I, I'm already assuming that if I'm doing it, I have to do it properly. Yeah, yeah. Like you can't just like tap it and be like, oh, there we go. Wow, kick the wall. That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I'd, I'd rip my thumbnail off. Ooh, tough one, tough one. <laughs> oh, man. You know? I, I just have to go to the toothpick, man. Do you know why? Could it be quicker? Yeah, just get it done. 
It's going to suck. Yeah, but the damage would be so much worse. Yeah, you're right, man. But, like, you know, you can... And it goes so deep. You can bandage that shit up, put a shoe on. You know, that thumb comes are going to be like, what the fuck happened to your hand, bro? And then you have to tell everyone. Bro, bro, you can reattach it. Reattach Just stick it back on and re-bandage it. And that, those bad boys are just... That's how stitches work. You can totally reattach that bad boy. Uh-huh. Just put it back in the place, yeah. wrap it up. Dude, okay, okay. Are you saying I mean, that if you met... if met's... bones can reconnect, I'm pretty sure my thumb now can reconnect. Wait, do you mean to say that if we both did this challenge at the same time, we could swap thumbnails? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a very good chance of rejection because we don't share the same oh, blood right. type. Okay, okay. And the, the chance of infection would be pretty massive and oh, they may have dude. to amputate. Well, what a, what a stitch up though. Like if it did actually work... Okay, mm-hmm. and then I went and got like a pedicure just on that one nail, and I came back and I'm like, "Hey, Jack, do you want your nail back? Like, what'd you get a pedicure for? That's pretty weird." <laughs> 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 oh wait, no, manicure. Pedicure's on the toe. Yeah. Yep. Yep, manicure. Just just go and get your thumbnail manicured for you. <laughs> that makes perfect sense, dude. Perfect sense. Yeah, just be like, hey, man, I uh, fixed it up at least. <laughs> All right, next question. Hit me up. All right, man. That I'm gets killing us... it. I'm killing it. Uh, I'm loving this <laughs> shit so far. All right, we've got, our, we've got our first apocalypse question. This is Okay, so this is the apocalypse part of the episode. Okay. You get to hear uh, all these crazy theories and... Um, and uh, situations. This is the bit that's going to take the longest. Did you realise this? You're going to have some fun trying to cut this up and fit it into half an hour. No, no, I'll, I'll let it run long. The listeners will like it. <laughs> They'll listen. They'll listen to more. You'll be like, oh, look, extra special double length episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the last one I put out was an hour and a half, man. People are going to love this shit. Oh, okay, sweet. All right, the apocalypse. What's your choice of apocalypse weapon? We're talking. Okay, first of all, we'll define po- apocalypse. Let's imagine. Yeah, that's very important. Let's imagine slow-moving zombie apocalypse. Oh, okay, okay. And you're in your current situation, right? You're you're where you live currently, and you're in the current day. Okay, so I've basically what I've got on hand. Let's make it more interesting than that. You're where you are okay. right now. Everything else, but. You have a week... Access to a weapon of my choice. Yeah, no, you have a week to get all this oh. shit ready. Okay. So are talking slow-moving zombies, right? Yep. Um, are they falling apart? Like, um, yeah, what it's... was that TV show that everyone loves? Yeah, it, it's it's proper, Walking like... Dead. Um, yeah, it's, it's like proper, for, like old-school zombie falling apart. Okay, okay, so... The weak zombies. Yeah. The best well, possible case, situation. I'd go with a, a light weapon. One with a little bit of reach so I can push back. Um, probably a quarter staff. Quarter staff. Basically, you know, it, you know what? Broom handle. Broom handle will do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you got a week. I uh, don't need that long. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Slow moving zombies. Like, if you push them up, it's going to take them, like, three seconds to get... Uh, push them over, it's going to take them, like, three seconds to get back up. Get your yep. broom handle, trip them over the legs, or push them over backwards, and walk away. You're set. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Okay, okay, so that's... Actually, even better than the broom handle, keep the broom head on it. That way you've got a wider pushing face. You could push over two zombies at once. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I like it. Just push away zombies and beat them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once once they're on the ground, just stomp on their head. You know, it, it, it's not that hard. Dude, imagine the with, with those particular zombies. Yeah, you, you, all you gotta do is if that push was them a over. series, right? You could just imagine the cheesy lines that they would use, like "Ah, oh, time to sweep up the trash" and shit like that. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, okay, okay. Let's increase the intensity of the zombies. Imagine they're okay. like. Resident Evil style. What's your what's your okay. choice of weapon? Um. Well, what I do first is when dealing with a decent zombie. What's important is uh, preventing lesions. Yep. Um. 
Otherwise, you get blood in it, which is important when you're starting a weapon. You don't want one that you know sprays blood everywhere because you're screwed. Mm-hmm. Um, I deck myself out in motorcycle gear. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, thick. Got your gloves, your boots. A zombie ain't going to be biting through that. Like. Yeah. I get you know. It. You're right. And then uh, knuckle busters. Yes. <laughs> Here's why. When facing a zombie swarm, you want to conserve energy. So if you're swinging around like a friggin' great sword or something, you're not going to last long. No. When, when with a zombie, they're vulnerable. If you hit their head, a good shock to the head is enough to take them out. Knuckle busters. If you throw a couple of light jabs at their heads, and then night night, yeah. you're good to go. So I know that you, like in the past, have said that. You're thinking like chainmail, but you reckon that that's too heavy, and you've gone to like um, yeah. to motorbike gear. Yeah, I, I, I used to think like you know full night gear. You know, yeah, you'd be safe. Nothing would be able to get you. But in reality, you don't need that much. Like a, a decent motorcycle gear, maybe for a couple of Kevlar plates and the soft bits. You know, motorcycle gear comes with Kevlar a lot of it. Um. You'd be sad, basically. Yeah, I get it. I, I like that one. Um, what, what what about a choice of vehicle? Are you just going to go like full armored bus, or what, what's your apocalypse Ooh. vehicle? Well, there are two ways you can go about it. Um, if you're living in the city, you want something small quiet and maneuverable because you're going to need to be able to weave in and out of traffic jams. So honestly, smart car. I mean, (laughs) the thing's silent because it's electric, it's tiny, (laughs) and it's still enclosed. Dude, I'm just picturing you, like, just piling out of a fucking smart car in motorbike (laughs) gear with a set of knuckle busters, like, and just being like, get in, dude, the apocalypse is here. I'm just, like, fucking out the door. I know that the shit's gone down. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, think about it. An electric car makes basically no noise. A water track is on these noise. Yep. You come roaring through on your, you know, your, uh, your, your battle bus or whatever, which you're going to need to fuel up very flipping quickly. Yeah. Good luck finding fuel in the fucking zombie pocket. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, a solar paneled. Chuck a couple of solar panels on top of my um, yeah yeah you, smart car. I, I just I'm feel like I feel like solar power is not going to be enough to power it to go right. Like I, I feel like yeah, not for long. Oh, they, they did have that one solar power car who uh, which drove across Australia. Mm. Did you ever read about that? No, no. Solar power car just covered the entire thing in solar panels, pretty much. Right, and just drove it across the middle of Australia. That did honestly, thought. The apocalypse was here. Did pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> He's still fucking going. He's just like, fuck this. Yeah, um, I, I'd, go, I'd go a smart car, something electricity-based, um, just because it would be much easier. Yeah. And if you have some decent batteries and some, uh, like, those little fold-out camping um, flipping... Solar panels. Yeah. Flip out a couple of them. Yeah, gather your yeah. power for the day when you're in a safe spot, and then, you know, when you need to move, you need to move. Yeah. No, dude, I, I dig it. Um. All right. But so. that is only if you're living in the city. If you're living in the country, much less zombies, much more open space, much less traffic. Get yourself a big truck with a big uh, tray in the back. And just have a mobile base. Just keep moving. Yeah. No, I, I, I like it, man. I, I reckon you're right with the country. Like, And also, I feel like a lot of the stuff out there is diesel-powered. So, like, if, you, if yeah. you're, you're probably more likely to stumble upon reserves of diesel than petrol. Definitely, definitely. Um, me, personally, zombie apocalypse start tomorrow. The council truck parked outside. I think it's massive. It's got all the gear you could ever want already on the damn thing. Nice. Yeah, you just like it's just already got it. your broom and stuff. 
<laughs> dude, have you seen the council brooms that yeah, they used to sweep in like the excess asphalt of cars? Yeah, things like a meter across. Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> Take out a whole family of one swipe. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah, it's like you're taking a table booking. You're like, uh, zombie apocalypse, family of four, one broom. You just walk this way. <laughs> Oh man, what, uh, what's a okay? So we've played a few like apocalypse games. I remember we used to play like Resident Evil all the time and shit like that. Yep. Yep. Um, and a lot of Left 4 Dead. Lot of yeah, Left 4 Dead. Dead, that sort of shit. Um, the I, I played a lot of Red Dead Redemption, Un- Undead Nightmare, like that. Oh, yeah, that's great. That sort of shit, man. So if you're picture picture um, just from knowledge from games and stuff. What do you reckon would be, like, a weapon that someone would think is, like, a good fucking choice, but just ends up being terrible? Uh, the chainsaw. Absolutely, dude. That's my fucking pick for that question, too. Yeah, never, ever, ever go the chainsaw. In every video game, they make the chainsaw look so damn cool. But the thing is heavy, man. The thing is heavy. Yeah. And you need fuel for it. It makes a lot of noise. If you're going to be running around fighting zombies on a day-to-day basis, you, you want to travel lighter. You want to, don't want to be lugging yeah. around a flipping chainsaw everywhere you go. Yeah, and then have to restart, start it up every time, like, you go yeah. into a building. Yeah, They're like, like you... woo, 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 ripping that rat, rip jet, the, the freaking cord. As the zombies are pouring down the hallway. It's got like a bigger motor than your smart car and it uses more fuel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, it, it's a terrible idea. Terrible uh, idea. Smart car chainsaw. How about that? <laughs> oh, another note is though, in Australia, guns. Oh, for sure. Guns dude, like, even... would not work because at, there's not enough ammo. Yeah, I, like even even games. I mean, if you're a gun store owner and you got like a crap ton of, you know, ammo in the back. Oh yeah, 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 no yeah. guns for days, but yeah, it's, it's like it's like in a few. Like I know in the there's it's not really zombies, but in like Silent Hill. Whenever I mm-hmm. play in that game and like any of those games, I've got a lot of them. Actually, I want to do a gaming um, thing later down the track, like a Twitch thing where I play um, horror games. Oh yeah. Uh, just games in general, but I I like to do some um, horror games, like um, stream those. So yeah, that's um that's something that's in the works at the moment. Um, and oh, you know what game I just got? Yeah. Amnesia. Oh yeah, dude. You you like that? It it's free right now with the uh, uh, Epic PSN Game or whatever. Store app. Oh right, the okay. Epic Game Store. Yep. Uh, and so far it seems pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, so the um yeah, I I like that. I I like any of those like I was playing um I I'm still playing for a lot of like the ones that came out ages ago, but I I like all the yeah. survival horror, but let me tell you dude, survival horror has taught me one thing. If you find a gun, like just fucking keep it for like if you've got like a boss fight or some shit, but don't just fucking yeah. use it as your primary weapon. Like yeah, dude, like if I'm in an apocalypse, I find a gun or some shit or I get a gun. Yeah, I'm not going to fucking throw it away, but I'm not going to just, like, use it the next chance I get. Oh, heck no. Also, if you do manage to get a gun, say you get a handgun and you got, like, nine bullets. Yep. That that could be nine zombies if you're a good shot and you hit them in the brain every time. But much more useful use for it? Suicide. Human. <laughs> Suicide, yes, but human. <laughs> Look, dude, let me trust you. Trust me, dude. If you find a handgun, like a revolver, say, and there's nine bullets mm-hmm. in it, no, not a revolver because they're six shots. So you find a, yeah. a revolver with a six six bullets, right? It's fucking full. You can guarantee, just like in the movie The Mist, that last bullet's for fucking you. Like if you if you're at the point where you've yeah. only got one left, that's your shit, man. That's got your mm-hmm. name on it. Oh, definitely, definitely. But it's gonna be so useful for intimidation tactics, mm. like. In an apocalypse situation, law and order out the window, bandits around everywhere. You got yourself a gun, you start waving in people's faces, they're going to back the F off. Yeah. Yeah, dude. No, you're, you're right. I think th- I, th- I think that the the practical uses of owning a gun in an apocalypse is, is better than using intimidation. One. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
yeah. No, for sure. All right. So but that... you don't want to fire off without like the worst case scenario because not even track zombies. Exactly. Start shooting. It's exactly. And you swarmed. It's a, exactly like you said about the chainsaw. Noisy. Yep. And uh, hard to keep going. Um, it's yep. it's like um, if anyone's ever seen the uh, oh seen the Bill Burr special where he talks about like um, home defense and buying a gun. Mm-hmm. It's like not many people have used a gun for self defense, right? So like they don't realize the first thing you're gonna the first shot you're just gonna hear a bang followed by. <laughs> like <laughs> you're never gonna like you won't even hear the next couple shots properly because I'll just be like a muffled sound through it, through the ringing in your ears. Yeah. Uh yeah. So anyway, that's the uh that's the shitty um the shitty weapons, the good weapons, your situation, <laughs> all that stuff all covered off. Now, um now the closer um the last the last question now the apocalypse questions. First of all, right now, um, who would be your apocalypse partner? So you had to choose one other person to get through it. Like hey. someone close by? Um, okay, so... Or are you saying like anyone in the world? If I could have like the dream team member. Yeah, so that's the that's the second part of the question. Um, is anyone alive or dead to be ultimate oh, don't, don't give me all dead because you know I'll just go straight to Bruce Lee <laughs> <laughs> dude I feel like yeah man I don't know I feel like I feel like maybe Bruce Lee wouldn't be the best option I suppose if you're going through all of history and there are some badasses in there yeah you, just, you like you can't just like I you can't really some people are so long ago, long ago you, that you don't really know what they'd be like like you imagine just been like, oh yeah. Well, in that case, my apocalypse partner is like Genghis Khan. <laughs> See, the problem with Genghis Khan is Genghis Khan doesn't speak English. Yeah, and he's had a bit of a nasty reputation. Think about how useful you would be to Genghis Khan. What's the chances he'd keep you around? True, true. Well, uh, it depends. Like, if your buddy's got Bruce Lee, they might have mad beef. <laughs> They're just like, like you can just get to, dude. That that's all that it would be worth. What it would be like if everyone has this option? I choose Bruce Lee. You choose Genghis Khan. No, other way around. I'll take Genghis. I don't give a fuck. I'll go on a road trip with him. My my prim- <laughs> primary fucking objective is to get him to you so that we can watch the Genghis Khan Bruce Lee fight that just never happened. You see, <laughs> Bruce Lee would win because Genghis Khan is from a thousand years ago. And back then, people were about two feet shorter. Yeah, right, right. So he's like two foot shorter. Oh, yeah, it's just bare knuckle too. Like, it's fucking just like yeah. not even weapons. But you got your little look, like, what, five foot tall, like, um, Genghis Khan. I'm assuming he's tall for his, you know... For his age. <laughs> ...time in history. <laughs> he's yeah, tall for, for his for age. that age. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bruce Lee's still like, what, five foot seven, five foot eight. Yeah. He's got like... A good head on him, and that makes a difference in a fight. Yeah, I get it. Just from the extra reach, let alone anything else. Yeah. So right now, you had to choose someone. Who would it? Who would it be? Oh, my dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would just. Like... It easy pick. The dude has many skills. He can do some bush carpentry. He knows a little mechanics, bit of welding. Dude. Yeah, mechanics. Yeah. The, the, the dude it. has a wealth of skills and abilities. Man, I I just thought of I just thought of the best image. Mm. Council truck rolls up. The old man and you just get out. He's holding like a stop sign and just beating up zombies with a broom <laughs> and a stop sign. It's like the best mental image. Dude, the stop sign would make a great weapon. It's like what actually serrated. Imagine if you like got a yeah, knife yeah. sharpener and just sharpen the yeah, edge. Yeah, sharpen that edge thing, and like it's light. Um, it's solid. You know, dude, the pole you knife. Damage. You know those like pole knives, the the pole sword or whatever it is. Yeah. That that if you're gonna use like a sword or a knife, it would need to be on a pole, right? Like that's the best way to you like a lot yeah, of like, actually forget broom, spear. I just spear all the way. Dude, just like the Vlad the Impaler on like just charging through zombies, holding out a spear. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Spear. You got that extra reach, and. You know, if you're halfway decent, you could put it through a nice socket fairly easily. 
<laughs> and they're not trying to dodge. That's the advantage of fighting zombies. You don't have to be that skilled. Yeah, they're fearless, They don't right? dodge. Yeah. You just got to stick the spear out about eye level, straighten towards his <laughs> face, and he can just run straight onto that bad boy. Right. So y- your choice of um, living or dead apocalypse partner, who are you choosing? Oh, I have to go someone with decent skills. Someone who. How about we'll just go living right now, but you get to choose anybody. Okay, see, I'd be tempted to go straight for Thor, you know? Yeah. The mountain, because he's literally a flipping mountain. He'd be great to have. But think about that dude's caloric intake. Yeah, 10,000 cows, man. Are you going to keep that up to Yeah. Him? Yeah, yeah. Don't be populous, not a lot of food. You know, it's not happening. That's why I would go Keanu Reeves. Yeah, why is that? That dude trained hard for his movie roles. Uh, John Wick, he's a martial arts master in real life, as yep. well as being pretty decent with a gun in real life. He did that SWAT training for like six months. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Keanu Reeves would be great to have. Man, just go, just <laughs> go like Tom Cruise. He does all his own stunts and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't go Tom Cruise because uh, just personality confliction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you See, just... Keanu's a pretty chill dude, so he'd be he'd be good to have around. You know, man. I, I would probably. I don't think Keanu would abandon you if you were like getting attacked by a zombie. He'd, he'd, he'd come in and save you. Yeah. Uh, Tom Cruise, probs not. Yeah, true, true. It's like you were saying before, like you got to think about what do you have to offer for them sort of thing. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> what's to stop just choosing like your celebrity crush, kissing them, and then letting the zombies kill you? <laughs> like just... <laughs> <laughs> straight up sick, like just, just, the, just the most beautiful woman you can think of. Yeah, just straight up, you're just sitting there like... You know, all right, I'm going to have to go Mila Kunis, and then you just kiss her as soon as she appears and then let the dom- zombies kill you and you have a smile on your face the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that could work. <laughs> oh, man, I, f- I feel like... Um, dude, she might actually be a good choice, man. G- she's a fucking badass, man. Like, I-, I just feel like aside from... Like, out of... In her league of, like, Hollywood actors, I feel like she's, like... Fairly badass. Yeah, yeah. You'd like, want to go someone who's pretty badass. Yeah, yeah. Nah, m- maybe not. Maybe, dude. I feel like honestly, when it comes to choosing just, a partner, just get Conor McGregor. It'll it, it, dash everyone. Oh though. man, do you know what though? We're like the same height. We're kind of both fiery and shit. Like <laughs> I, I just feel like I feel like it'd be like the same dude. Like you kind of need someone that's like because. You and him is a good combo, right? But me and him, it's like, yeah. aside from him being able to beat the living shit out of me and zombies, I I, fe- <laughs> I feel like um, I would go for someone that had like a different physical um, advantage than mine, like someone that was yeah. taller than oh, like. You know who I go with? Yeah, Mike Tyson, and then give him the knuckle busters. Oh, man. Strongest punch in the game with some knuckle busters. Imagine that, hey, just popping heads. Dude. Like, I, I wouldn't need to fight. I'd have the ultimate killing machine right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you've... Cr- like Even to this day, the dude can punch harder than just about everybody. Yeah, dude, like, just picture he gets bitten, you've created, like, a super zombie. Oh shit! <laughs> it, no, you just like, he's because like I feel like his muscle oh, memory. That's what, that, there goes the bullets I've been saving. <laughs> <laughs> One for you. Uh, so, <laughs> so this actually came up in the last episode. Um, I was talking about the muscle memory on Mike Tyson. Yeah. And and I honestly reckon, dude, if he became a zombie, he would still be punching because it's just like so ingrained for him to yeah, just throw yeah. punches, man. I could see that. Yeah, just he just he's just old punchy the zombie. But yeah, anyway, that's all the end of the uh, apocalypse questions and the apocalypse episode. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in, and thanks Jack for being on the show. Oh, dude, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. 
Yeah, I feel like this was just. You'll like, have to have me on again sometime in the future. Oh, for sure, man. No, I'd love to have you back. Um, and if you enjoyed hearing Jack on the show, make sure you give us some feedback. Uh, rate the podcast if you listen on iTunes. Uh, go on to it's on Spotify. Um, it's also available on YouTube, and I post all the links on my social medias: Marky Worthington Comedy, Facebook, Instagram, and also check me out on Twitter, which is Marky Comedy. And soon to come. There'll be um, a few more platforms available, so make sure you uh, yeah subscribe to all the stuff. And if you enjoy it, share it, like it, and um, we can keep them coming. Keeps all the content coming out. The more that people support, love to have you back on the show, man. Uh, be able to uh, yep. run through some more scenarios. I know that, as I mentioned before, some of the gaming stuff that I want to do down the track, it'd be good to um, incorporate you with that sort of stuff as well. You've been yep. my brain's yep. trust when it comes to gaming since I started getting into it. So. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool to do down the track. I'm glad that I finally got you on here, man. It seems like um, it flowed really well. Yeah, dude, it's, uh, it's been fun. Cool. All right, well, thanks, uh, thanks, thanks everyone for listening, and um, keep your ears out for the next episode. All right, thanks. Peace. Bye, everybody. Wait, 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 wait. Let me take a couple deep breaths. All right, I'm good. <laughs>